That's the segment where we review our papers, uh, we look at the tabloids, and we talk about some of the uh, stories that are trending on the front page of the tabloids. Uh, my name is Chidima Oranwa. And I'm Ajuruchuku Okabwe. Good morning. All right, so quickly we'll take a short break. When we come back, um, we'll delve into what we have for you this morning. Stay with us. All right, you're welcome back. And today uh, it's one of the special editions where we'll be doing it alone in the studios this morning. Uh, we're going to be uh, reading out some of the headlines on our tabloids and then we discuss some of them. And then we also, um, you know, advise you to go to any newspaper stand, get yourself one or two copies of the papers we're going to discuss so that you have a detailed information of what we are going to talk about this morning. Uh, so the first paper we are starting with this morning is the Daily Times newspaper. And uh, we have, uh, Bada, as Bada headlined in front page of Daily Times, Tinibu family has mortgaged a future of Nigerians. This is coming from Atiku. Says Nigeria rapidly transforming into a government of Tinibu by Tinibu and for Tinibu. Mm -hmm. Okay? So um, then we see again, again, the Chinese firm sees a set to sell Nigeria's UK properties over $70 million award. Promises transparency in sale of properties due to keen public interest of Nigerians. No place for non-computer literate in civil service. This is coming from Wells and Jack. Federal government hikes international passport fees. Nigeria needs to needs new mapping to address security coming from surveyors. Pegasus vowed to end the scourge of crude oil theft. Alleged terrorism financing don't silence NLC. Sislak tells police. Okay, uh, these are what we have on the front page of the Daily Times this morning. Um, this is, I know when I read out that uh, particular headline, uh, the major headline, yeah, you started smiling. Right, of course, because uh, in governments, we were told that it's government democracy. Of the that is government of the people by the people <laughs> and for the people. I, I think you said that <laughs> it is now Tinibu. That is most likely what you will call it. Oh, good. But at least, but then, in all honesty, you can say that um, that is what Nigeria seems to have turned into. We witnessed it in the last administration when appointment went one way, and now we are witnessing it in this present administration where um, friends and, would I say, associates of the president are getting juicy, um, uh, let's say, uh, portfolios in the present government. And, you know, when... when you don't appoint people based on competence and based on antecedent of what they can actually do, but you're rather appointing them just the means to settle them for one job or the other they do, or maybe the friendship links that you guys once shared. That is what um, Atiku is saying. But at the same time, as Nigerians, the system is what actually... That is what actually runs in the system. Exactly. That's what I wanted to say. Yeah, because, because if you two were... To I, yes, I think he's saying that because he's not the person exactly, in power. Exactly. I'm, not, I'm not saying that it's, oh, it's, it's good for it's you good, to yeah. do that. It's not. But we've over time, we've seen it play out in Nigeria. That once you get into power, you get to have your family, your friends, your actresses friends. around you. Despite the fact you know that they are not That's qualified yeah. to do a particular job. But because they are your friends or because they are related to you, you wouldn't have any choice to do that. But in the actual sense, if we really want this country to move forward and if we really want uh, a better society, we should start looking at, you know, uh, involving people who are competent enough in a particular post. I mean, putting people there for them to really work. Not you going to get someone that, let's say, for example, someone that studied agriculture to go and be the uh, minister for technology or minister for women affairs and all that. Let's start... Uh, in this country to put square square pegs in the square, square holes. holes and that that will really go a long way in getting us to where we are 
federal government hikes international Ex passport fees. Wow, that's a very interesting wow. story. I remember there was a time they said that it was just 25,000 naira for you to process your passport. And then we, if you go there, you still have to pay. If you want it to be, you know, uh, sharp, sharp stuff, you have to pay more and do that. Now that the federal government has hiked it, only God knows how much you pay for you to obtain just a copy of your international passport now. I... And then again, the re why are they hiking it now? That's another uh, another question we need to ask. Because I don't I don't really understand it. Or well, they feel that people are jack buying so much. So <laughs> if they if 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 they the, make the, the price so the, exorbitant, the money, it will the, money, the money to jack buy with the hike in passport will not deter you from leaving this country if you want to leave. If you have to leave, let me even use that word. I have yeah. to because this is not a need a, a case of if you need to. Nigerians, people that are jackpying from Nigerians are doing it based on the fact that they have to. They have, so increasing it to me is not going to deter anything. And then you begin to wonder, Nigeria needs new mapping to address insecurities for that, This is coming, coming from the surveyors. Is this another project that, just like the... Uh, what do they call it? Uh, the, co I, the coastal. I, I, uh, coastal. <laughs> because like... like if you tell me that you want to map out Nigeria, the, 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 the boundaries of Nigeria, you understand? If you hear the amount of money that will be now, so given, start, so. given to this. Now we've seen now, it on the front page of paper. Tomorrow they will start it. They will, they will begin it. Uh -huh. You understand? So to me, these are not the issue. We know insecurities. We know where this, uh, what is it called? Um, um, bandits, terrorists are all staying. Go there and flush them out as much as you can. Again, you know, uh, we've t we talked about uh, the uh, uh, Ajero being invited yeah, by the yeah. police, and now Sislak is telling the police that they shouldn't shouldn't silence NLC, Nigeria Labour Congress, because of the alleged terrorist financing. I mean, that's one of the allegations against the uh, NLC, NLC boss. Yeah. Yes. So um, we have a whole lot, but let's not dwell so much uh, because on because some uh, of them the might repeat times. themselves. Yes. Yeah. Quickly, let's go to the Vanguard, and then the banner headline there is talking about petrol scarcity worsens as marketers load at 718 naira per liter. Transporters fares rise by 200%. Transporters lament impact on businesses. Nigeria becoming failed state. That's coming from Pengasin. And then on the mast there of the Vanguard, you see food inflation reducing. We will reduce it further, finance minister. And bad governance, CSOs berate federal government over prolonged detention of protesters without charges. Federal government increased international passport fees. Police invitation to Ajero. More critical unions give strike notices. And then we have uh, the picture of um, P2B and uh, the former vice president. I think uh, the Democratic Convention in the U.S. Federal government finally criminalizes vandalism of telecom facilities in New Gazette. Nigeria made Dangote a colossus. It must now handle him wisely. Wow, that's interesting. Uh, sports minister dangles 2.4 million cash reward for gold medalist. In which event? Huh? In which sporting event? I should be asking you. <laughs> okay. We'll get to find out later. Fake certificate, Uganda, Kenya, right. Mm -hmm. Uganda, Kenya, right. Jam demands student verification. And then let's see what's... Uh, okay, that's all we have there. Petrol scarcity worsens at marketers load at 718. Um, Chidema, there is this constant deliberate hike in price from the day Tinubu became president. Yes. It has been constant, it has been deliberate, and nothing, no one, even Kiari, nobody has come to address this issue. Nobody. Yesterday we read about 3 million generated, 3.3 million paid trillion for subsidy. And then you begin, I don't, sometimes I, when, I, when I read these things I begin to wonder, how can you have a palm kernel processing meal? Uh -huh. You have the palm kernel, the palm fruit. You leave your compound. Hmm? Take it as far as Sokoto 
to go and refine. Then you bring the finished product. Do you know the residue, the derivatives, the byproducts of that palm kernel that you're leaving at Sokoto? Then you're bringing, bringing back fresh palm oil. Just, to just, your like, just like we've said earlier, most of these people they have refineries outside this country, and of course, whatever it it is, the other of finished product, the derivative, they are making use of it there. Maybe they are selling it to. Of course, they're that selling it because it. that so, is not being accounted for. Exactly. So that's the reason why we can't make our refineries here to work because um, in the Boas and Aladigema Wulundinze, you get. So most of these things we are talking about, we have a lot of uh, how many refineries? Four of four. them in this country. And you have and more than six uh, licensed yes even though they are not enough to supply the capacity to you know take care of the region but at least located. at least let's start from somewhere let's start from somewhere let's start from somewhere okay we are still hoping that dangote refinery just like they promised us um, i think this is the fourth time this promise is coming that they are going to start uh, you know uh, selling, selling to in, in naira in naira and then again that they will start production by october so yes. we'll start by from then and all that so let's believe that by then things will become better because if marketers are loading at a price of 780 naira per liter how much are they going to sell to the people just yesterday when i was passing through a particular village I don't want to call name, but it's an independent uh, uh, marketer. I saw the line, and I said I asked on the driver that was, you know, convenient. The driver said that yes, they are selling at a cheaper rate. That's why you see people standing there, even if it means for them to stand there for a whole day, they don't mind once they get it at a cheaper rate. And then another thing that worries me so much in this country is the fact that we don't have any regulated price we are selling. You enter a particular filling station for now in Oka, you see some people selling 900, you see some people selling 930. And the see, and price I don't is understand. different. Is it not from the same source they're getting this? Why are the regulators not really doing their job? DPR. That's and you know somebody made mention of something here on Monday, one of our reviewers, talking about uh, that NMPC shouldn't actually be selling fuel, uh, fuel at this time. They shouldn't even have filling station. They should just focus on being the regulatory body. Because now, you, if you go to their filling station, they tell you they are selling 680, right? And then you see line, the one in Oka, you see line from there to uh, almost quarter junction. People are waiting to buy the day they will open and all that. So, I mean, they should just fix the price and make sure that every market is selling at a particular price so that we have uniformity. Wow. All right. Um, let's okay. also see this uh, fake certificate uh, issue, mm. uh, talking about uh, Kenya and the Uganda writing jam demanding student verification. Well, um, I don't understand the reason why they should be writing jam because me, I feel that as an international uh, university, if anybody comes from another country to register, maybe you should subject the person to write a test or something first. If he or she passes the test, then you can enroll the, person. the person. So I don't know why they will need verification from jam in Nigeria before they can actually, you know, take students to or admit students in their universities. Well, I did. Uh, uh, we need to read more about it, uh, maybe to really understand what is going on. But this fake certificate saga, I mean, it's it's nothing to write home about, speaking, especially when about. every day it's it's about Nigerians in different countries talking about fake certificate and all that okay um on that spot uh, story on page um, 31 of um the vanguard newspaper uh, where the sports minister dangles 24 24 million cash reward for gold medalists that's actually for the 2024 para olympic games okay. uh, happening in paris mm. and then you begin to wonder when the major olympic happened nobody told us about um 24 million. Probably maybe that was when Nigeria came back empty and empty. So this is more like a motivation. A motivation, right? A motivation. <laughs> motivation. Okay. That's a good one, though. You don't want to come back and pay again, so let's use this. Let's use this one as a motivation. <laughs> exactly. Because spending 12 billion and then going for an Olympic and then coming back empty and empty, it's, it's not uh, speaking well. Okay, so the next paper is the Daily Independent newspaper this morning. Federal government moves to enforce Supreme Court verdict on local government autonomy. That's the big story there. We have writers saying raises 10-man interministerial committee led by Akume. 
implement plan to save 10 billion naira from COP29 <coughs> expenses. Appeal Court affirms Shaibu as a deputy governor. Alleged terrorism financing. Ajero makes U turn accept to honor police invitation August 29. ITUC condemns intimidation of trade unions in Nigeria. We don't have record of XCJN or Nigerian CCT case file. This is coming from AGF. Tinibu makes fresh top appointment for DBI Nikums, Nikum, Nij Nijar Komsat. We don't have verifiable data in housing sector, Minister laments. Diaspora remittance grows by 130%, hits all-time high, all high of 553 million dollars in July. And then we have Nigerian arrested for 10 million dollar pandemic unemployment scam in U.S. Wow. Uh, reverse crisis will consume Wiki. Damagom Clark once accuses Wiki Damagom Anyawu of anti uh, party activities. Nigeria's future break. Okay, Nigeria's future bleak if PDP loses River, says BOT chair. New presidential jet unnecessary, waste of resources, aviation experts. Okay, uh, we've seen it in the front page of Daily Independent this morning. You have a lot of uh, interesting stories there. So um, we've talked about Ajero, and here we are seeing that he has decided to honor the invitation. Yeah. You know, because earlier he was like in doubt whether he wanted to honor the invitation, and the police made it clear that if he refuses to come, they are going to arrest, arrest him. him. So probably because of that, he wouldn't want that kind of humiliation. <laughs> he has decided to, you know, answer the call. Well, I, I strongly believe that that's the right thing to do, to do. Because you are just someone, come and explain things to us, and you go there and explain. If you don't have anything, any skeleton to hide, that's the best thing to do. Go and explain yourself. And at the end of the day, if anything happens, negatively, so to say, then Nigerians can now come out and start fighting for you. So The 130% uh, remittance from diaspora, is it connected to the 10 million pandemic unemployment scam? It could be. It could be connected. It could be connected because <laughs> I don't understand the kind of figures we are calling in this yeah, country. Because 553 million dollars in yeah. just one month. Wow. In just one month, that's to tell you the weight of what Nigerians are really, really doing out there. Hmm. And now the federal government is they are increasing uh, the price of international passports. But that will deter people from wanting to Not move. at all, not at that all. That won't they, they actually need to tell us because I don't know why owning an international passport, which should be like <coughs> driver's license. It's just like coming now to tell you that driver's license is 100,000 naira. Yeah, yeah. Of course, that is what it means. Or national ID card. Is under, that is what it means. Because in some crime, those things are things that they even come to you almost at free, as long as you're a citizen of such countries. Those are your, more like your entitlement. In fact, as, as, as somebody in the university, you're mandated in some countries to have an international, international passport. Yeah. The moment you're in the secondary school, but Nigeria, everything seems to be like it's true. If they see you at the what is it called? Immigration office. They are seeing you like you want to jackpot. Forgetting that there are need that you might need there to go for either to study or to go and do sports or to even go for journalism too, to cover events. There are so many reasons for tourism too. Yeah, tourism and holidays. And holidays. So why, why make because this thing so people, stressful? People like me, I would have preferred, you know, going out there. If I have the money, if I want to go for a vacation, I'll just go out with my family, have a vacation and come back. Because, man, it's, life is beautiful here. It, life is beautiful <laughs> here, my sister. It's actually beautiful. I'm you, it's just that our leaders here. are messing up with us <laughs> and their economy is not really not favorable yet. Really so, life is um, beautiful here. Maybe what they feel that increasing that, uh, I mean, uh, international passport, they feel that it's time for you uh, to maybe pay your dues before you have eventually leave the, leave country. the country so you must pay through your nose if you want to leave the country you pay exorbitantly for that but then again that's not the right thing to do because just like you said i mean these are something that you just walk into the office register and they will just hand it over to you you shouldn't even be paying for it but <laughs> as citizens as citizens <laughs> you shouldn't even be paying for it but well, then we don't have verifiable data 
in housing sector, Minister Lament. Uh -huh. How does that sound? Um, I don't know why sh this should be coming from the minister in the first place. If you don't have the data, why don't you start making it up? Why, so, do you, why don't you start what collecting the data? What was the sense data? of the census we did in the last decade? Okay. The one we did in 20, 2006. Can't you generate something from those and probably have your enumerators go down and then do something on the field? E e e e because e this... This data is very, very important in order for government to... You should go. understand that the reason why he's saying this is that probably he's pushing for that census to happen. The one that was cancelled. The one that was cancelled. Uh -huh. okay. So maybe he didn't want to come out to say, like, publicly tell the federal government that, I mean, it's time for us to do that. So he's just looking, looking for, for a, a way, a way yes. to, get, to make that happen. Because since I was speaking, we really need to have exactly. data on housing. It's the responsibility of the government to a certain extent to provide housing for the people. Landlords are killing people in this part of the world, sincerely speaking. If, if you don't know, I must confess it. But if housing was part of government's priority, some of these burdens would be taken off civil servants and even those in the private sector. Mm -hmm. Well, I believe maybe something has to be done in, in that aspect. And quickly, let's see what we have on the nation newspaper. Uh, fresh inflow triples foreign investors' portfolio to 598 billion naira. Total transaction at the NGX rose from 2.15 trillion to 3.1 trillion in one year. Uh, scheme to eliminate trade bottlenecks rolls out. Well, that's coming from the minister. 20, 220 illegal refineries found in one week. Well, vandalized pipelines also. Why airports are performing below capacity by Federal Airports Authority of Nigeria. Minister, our plans for national youth dialogue. Passport fees rise to 100,000 and 50,000 applicants abroad, not affected. Uh. Plot to remove Damagun, uh, tippings, uh, PDP crisis. Wiki tackles clerk vows to remain in party. Students, others, um, excited by loans disbursement, and that's on page 15. And then you have EFCC, ICPC, one on uh, procurement uh, breach. That's all you have on the front page of the nation newspaper. We're talking about, um, in the Vanguard, we're talking about petrol scarcity worsens as, as marketers uh, load at 780 naira per liter. And in the nation, you're seeing there at the mast, 220 illegal refineries found in one week. What is happening? It's just that people are looking for ways to enrich themselves in a country where our system is not working. Because had it been our system is working, all these illegal refineries, yes, I know that what they are doing is illegal, but these are people that on their own, they devise the means to be refining oil locally in any way they are doing that. You need to call those people. We, we have been talking and uh, advocating for modular refineries in our country. If these people c can actually do it illegally and refine and I don't know how, how purify the, the, the oil the and whatever. Yeah, uh, but then again, they are doing it in such a way that they are still using it. People are using it. And somehow, this, some of these um, marketers will be buying it from them. And that's what we use in our, what we buy from our filling station. So why don't you engage these people? And then once you see them, maybe you demolish the whatever it is that they are using to do it, seize whatever you see. And tomorrow they will still come up again. That's what they are. Setting up this thing doesn't even take... Exactly. That's the point. Point. But we don't want to do that. We just want to do it the way we want to do it. Look at these people. See, see what they are doing. Yes, they, they might not be doing it the right way. You engage, talk with them, you and see them. how you can train them to do better. And, and even then, tax them after the whole exactly. thing. Monitor them. Uh, well, I don't know. This country, well, God help us. It's, it's, it's quite disheartening with the kind of stories we see every, every morning in the pages of our tabloids. But then again, we'll keep talking and we believe that one day the people concerned will you know, hear what we are saying and also make lives better for Nigerians by Imago doing some of these policies that will be uh, citizen friendly. All right, um, we also have other papers uh, this morning. I think we'll take all of them together and then talk on a few. Okay. Uh, yes, let's start with uh, the Guardian newspaper. 
echoes of cabinet reshuffle trail uh, minister's performance a year after uh, that's on page six of the guardian newspaper and then we have as part edge diplomacy as the uh, chinese firm lists the country's assets for sale nigeria to begin revocation of dormant all world licenses uh, stakeholders set agenda for kekere ikun new cjn Arabambi alleges a plot by Ajero to spark civil unrest. Tinibu has mortgaged Nigeria's future to family friends, says article. Wike Damagon defend the standpoint as PDP crisis, uh, reverse crisis fester. Tough times ahead as subsidy shaves 7.7 .7 trillion naira of FAC allocations. Okay, well, uh, let's see the other paper. Air strike killed five uh, Boko Haram commanders in Borono. Okay, that's coming that's from the National Daily Trust. Uh, yeah, Air Force, and that's Daily Trust. And then we have um, Kano Anti Graft Agency probes 660 million fresh water contract scam. Wow. Federal government, uh, federal government targets $100 billion investment, 2 million jobs from creative economy. Northern group to meet leaders over region's problems. Uh, PDP crisis, if I open up, it won't be pleasant. That's coming from Damagun. Ribadu, Air Rufai Tambowa meet at Atiku's residence in Abuja. Mm. Federal government hikes passport fees. Abducted Sokoto district head dies in captivity. Yeah. That's touching. The Tribune next. Okay, uh, next paper is the Tribune newspaper this morning. Uh, Rivers crisis. The Magon opens up on controversial letter to appeal court. And we have uh, writers that saying, replies Clark, says those asking him to resign are uh, undermining party's neck. As main opposition inaugurates reconciliation and disciplinary committees. I won't leave PDP. I will stay and fight. Uh, we can stay in that one. And then withdraw our uh, invitation to Ajero. Opposition lawmakers tell police says, allegation unbelievable. Recipe for crisis. <coughs> <coughs> Don't silence labor leaders. This lack con uh, cautions police. $500 million domestic bond investors right to assets funds protected under law a do businesses entrepreneurs suffer from increasing cost of doing business this is coming from NESG and then we can still see in the front page of Tribune crude oil drilling exploration in north fully on course and MPCL I'm not part of League of Northern Democrats says Yakasai uh, pioneer ICPC Chairman Justice Ayola dies at 90. Uh, Nigeria needs new mapping to address insecurity surveyors. Alleged drug purchase scandal. Kwankwaso Algon Chairman Permanent Secretary arrested. Enugu government demolishes kidnappers then says more to go down. No release of new minimum wage consequential adjustment causing anxiety this is coming from labor we have done our part finance ministry we are working on implementation wages commission payment of 70,000 naira will cause job losses this is coming from cppe organized private sector once federal government to announce pledged support seven more states ready to pay 70,000 naira okay that's it for tribune and uh, let's go to the blueprint and um, let's start from the mast. Prices of Gary tomatoes orders drop in Anambra, Eboy, Enugu. Chidima, please, you need to go to the market to confirm this. Yes. Out 30 unknown gunmen kidnappers were killed in Enugu. That's coming from the state government. The abductors, abductors rather, hide hostages in poultry farm. And we have Wicked declares park and pay scheme in FCT illegal. Banks adopt strategies to meet 1.293 trillion recapitalization targets. And on the spot, fried, 
You have uh, Afghan qualifiers, Super Eagles Open Cup, September. As PDP crisis deepens, Damagon declares Clark orders, Clark orders vows not to give in to distractions. Inaugurate disciplinary reconciliation committees, says we won't allow party to die. I will remain in the party to fight, Wiki declares, wonder who is fighting with. Supplements meant for malnourished children sold in Sokoto, that's coming from UNICEF. Federal government working on financial models for airports, coming from the minister, Kiyamo. Justify your huge pay, NBA charges judicial officers. NNPC report shows credit oil, crude oil revenue hit 12.02 trillion in 2023. Unity Bank champions digital literacy innovation for youth empowerment. Well, that's all we have this morning on these different um, newspapers for you. Um, two things here, let me see the Daily Trust. Um, two, two stories I want us to touch, and they are connected. Um, Northern leaders, Northern group to meet leaders over region's problem. And then you have the abducted Sokoto district head dies in captivity. Okay. Um, I think this is a new northern group, so it's not the one that we are used to. Okay, the Probably new northern the group to meet ahead. leaders. This one is a different group that maybe they came together and decided that it's time they, you know, they tackle whatever issues. Is, uh, that is happening to them. So, um, well, because it seems as if <laughs> no, but sometimes you begin to wonder. All these splinter groups that you have in the north, as in elders' consultative forums and the rest uh. of it all. Don't they see that the knot is actually sitting on a keg of gunpowder? As in, when you, if you've lived in the knot, you will understand what I'm talking about. The burgeoning rise of these Alamajiri children, mm -hmm. it, is, it, is, it is a phenomenon that is going to swallow all of us if nothing is done to address that menace. Sincerely speaking, I don't know, I'm not a northerner, I'm not a Muslim, I don't know what you can do in order to change the mindset of children that have been on the streets for 10 years of their life or more than that? How do you begin to rehabilitate such? Well, I think, I think the problem will even start from the people giving birth to them. I mean, the, the ones that are already 10, 15 years old, there's nothing we can do about them. It's just to see a way to, you know, make them blend and be, um, I mean, good uh, citizens of the country. But what are the people that will give birth to this number of children and just push them into the streets for them to go and be the uh, majority? Well, you know and that, that birth control is a no-no. That's world. what I'm saying. We need to start that reorientation to talk to this. How can you just give birth to children that you cannot really account for? Most of them, they don't even know where their kids are. All they, all they did was just give birth to them and the next thing they are off the streets and you don't even know what is happening to them. I mean, so the reorientation should start from the parents to those people that are, are of conceiving age. I mean, if you know that you cannot take care of a child, why giving birth to them? Well, why bringing people that will be causing problems for us in this country? People that you cannot even, you can't, you, you can't boost off, you know, uh, sponsoring their education, because feeding them, even and, or even making them to learn one skill or the other. And then they are roaming the streets. The next thing, they are turned to terrorists, kidnappers, kid bandits. And bandits and the rest of it all. And it's, it's, it's affecting them because when we talk about terrorism, the worst hit is the northern part of the country. Look at, we are talking about an abducted uh, Sokoto district head that died in captivity. It's no longer funny. So probably that's why this new group yeah. came up to see how the, these issues can be addressed. Because the other groups that they have, probably they're not doing anything they not or doing anything. maybe they're just enjoying what, what, what probably is Probably just happens. there to get power. Exactly. Because power is what concerns them the most. Well, um, also, in the front page of the Guardian newspaper, a cause of cabinet reshuffle trail, uh, minister's performance a year after. I mean, uh, this uh, reshuffling, is it going to do anything for us right now? Is it going to uh, help the Naira to come down from 1,600? Uh, it's more likely to, like, connected to what Atiku said. So the, a, 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 a group of Tinibu's friends and associates have enjoyed one year. Mm. So let's bring in a fresh group so wow. that they will enjoy because 
To me, that's the essence of it. That's what it seems like. Because what we should be talking about, or maybe but on the other side, maybe competence yeah. might now be coming. Yeah, let's, let's look at the you positive side let's here. Look at the, the, look, let's say the first one year was, guy, we've given you opportunity to go make money for yourself based on the promises I made to you. Uh -huh. Now, leave. Let me use the remaining three years and get people that will fix this economy. Because if you can see in the cartoon um, picture there, the caricature there, you will see the young man holding his, uh, uh, what is it called, uh, saw and armor, trying to fix a, a dilapidated wardrobe or cupboard as the cabinet or whatever you call it. It looks like that. But then, let us believe that the cabinet reshuffle will be bringing in technocrats, experts, to come and begin to wrestle this country and fix it. Hopefully, probably if there will be a need for seeking re-election, we will now probably begin to talk about that. But for now, let's believe that it's for the good and not servicing his friends and associates. Hmm. Okay, um, prices of Gary, tomatoes, others drop in Anambra, Ebony, and Enu. You know, this is the kind of story people like you of course, people <laughs> like you, this is, this will be interested. interested in. But I just hope it doesn't end on the, page, uh, the front page of a tabloid <laughs> uh, of a newspaper this morning that it's also happening in the market as we speak now. Uh, I think so on people, Monday we, we read about tomatoes dropping uh, in the but north. In north, you but today, uh, we are saying why, 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 the, why, not, why, why it's not, not happening in Anambra. In Anambra. So now by Thursday it has gotten down to, to this Anambra. So mm -hmm. probably, uh, I know a lot of people want to go to the market and see that a paint bucket of Gary is like 2,000 naira now. Probably. Probably. <laughs> or that, um, what else do we have there? Tomatoes. The, the basket of tomatoes is being sold for 50,000 naira now, not 100 and something Some thousand. Naira. Okay, um, I mean, that's it for our press review this morning. So, if you want to get details of all the stories, uh, the headlines that we read out this morning, all you need to do is just to get yourself a copy or you go to the newspaper stand and read to your satisfaction and get all the information that you need on the stories. On that note, we say a very big thank you to you for being part of our press review this morning. My name is Chidema Orangwa. And I'm Adjuluchuku Okawe. Thank you so much for joining us.